All right, Aquarius. Hi, it's Elle here to do a quick love reading. All right, so this reading is going to be for those of you who want to know about love, but you're all at different places in your life in terms of love, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. Thank you, God, for blessing the Aquarius with a clear, concise message from you. All right, so we have the Seven of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and then the Three of Swords. All right, so the Seven of Swords is for people who are dealing with someone who they have a past with, a past person, okay? The Three of Swords is for my Aquarius people who are dealing with a new love. You know, it's less than one year old, less than six months, whatever. And then we have the Queen of Cups. And this is for my completely, excuse me, completely single Aquarius, okay? We have the Queen of Cups coming up for the completely single, not talking to anybody, like their phone is dry, honey, it's dead. If it wasn't for this notification showing up on your phone, you wouldn't get a notification, okay? That's for my completely single Aquarius, the Queen of Cups. All right, so let's talk about it. Some of you who are dealing with somebody from the past here, they got the Seven of uh, Swords coming up. So they're trying to be strategic and maybe how they approach you. They're also trying to figure something out about you. You know, if you're still single, if you're still interested, they also could just be acting, you know, acting, maybe disinterested. This is the card that comes up when something is not what it really is, okay? This is masquerading around. This is somebody trying very hard to get away with something. So I'm trying to get away with the fact that um, I don't, you know, want the Aquarius to know how I really feel. This also could be slander or gossip. This is also somebody who they had um, very solo plans. You see a person from the past, very solo plans. You know, this is the Seven of Swords. This is um, somebody who will leave you holding the bag, the scapegoat. Um, someone who uh, they really would, you know, they're the lone wolf. They would go it alone. They don't really want to be in some super duper lovey dovey together together type of relationship. They don't, they don't care for it. Uh, not in this energy. Not in the Seven of Swords. Their plans are secretive uh, and solo. Okay, it only involves them. Uh, this is also, this person was a uh, trick, tricky, like master of disguise or, um, deceptive in nature. Also, they were out for themselves. Okay. So if you take anything from the seven of swords, it's a person who is out for themselves. They have solo plans. It's behind, you know, behind closed doors. They're not letting on to their plans. They're masquerading or acting as if you fill in the blank. So this is somebody who uh, was putting up a front in order to get because the seven of swords, the, the good side or the flip side of seven of swords would be like in business. Um, you need to let, you know, maybe you have a business deal. You need it to go through and you hate who you're doing business with. They're just not good people or they're just, they don't have a very good demeanor, but you have to act like you have to masquerade like you are, um, enjoying their company or enjoying talking to them or enjoying presenting to them or enjoying, you know, um, waiting for them to decide so that you can see it through so that you can close the deal. So the seven of swords is when you have to put on that front to get what you want. And that's what your person could have been doing, putting on the front to get what they want, wants it from you. They also, this also could talk about spying and, and this is also lack of communication. Okay. So maybe you and your person from the past are not communicating at all, or it's very little communication. And even in the communication, they're red flags and you also, you just question what this person says or what they do because it's, you know, it's not, um, of the highest regard for you or the relationship. All right. So, um, let's see, um, we're going to clarify the seven of swords here. Um, let's jump into the three of swords for those of you who are currently dealing with a, a new relationship. Um, so the three of swords, what I was getting was that, okay, we all know what that means. You know, it could be a third party situation. It could just be that a third party is meddling, stirring up confusion in your relationship. There's also could mean that some of your people are going through maybe a, a divorce, a legal divorce, uh, or this could be you Aquarius, um, in your new relationship. If you're not going through a legal divorce, then you're trying to divorce the idea of maybe you, you had plans for, 
another person and it's not working out. You get this new person and it's going great. So it's like you're trying to get rid of or separate from or divorce this other person and the idea of them. So, and the three of swords also, it talks about, um, some, some of your people or do you Aquarius, you know, that you have to put distance or separation between you and another party could be a friend, could be a loved one, could be a romantic, an old romantic partner. You have to put distance in between so that you can grow, uh, this new relationship. So somebody is divided in their heart space, you know, because I have to leave my friends or I have to leave my loved one, or I have to kind of put distance if I, if I really want growth in uh, this new relationship here, uh, says the three of swords. Some of you, you or the other person could be dealing with, um, loss in terms of their finances because they have gone through a divorce or a separation. So, um, that's making somebody kind of weary about maybe connecting or reconnecting with someone new or old, or I don't know. Um, well, this would be new. So definitely make it, making someone kind of apprehensive about getting into a new relationship because I'm already going through the divorce. I lost so much, um, or in the separation, I lost so much, um, so it's all about separation. Um, also getting over the heartbreak. Somebody's also anticipating a lot of heartbreak, a lot of, um, you know, miscommunication coming up. Also a breakdown in communication. So it's like somebody here with this new relationship, Aquarius could be you or the other person. Somebody knows that they have to really stop communicating with a particular person, really have to put distance between themselves and that person. Uh, so that they can have a uh, victory, you know, a, a, a successful relationship with this new love. This could be you Aquarius or the other person, or it could be mutual. You both have to kind of, you know, put the blockers up and the blinders up towards this other person could be a, a romantic person of the past, or it could just be a loved one, friends, whoever is stirring up trouble or meddling in your relationship. You're going to have to put some distance there. Now, uh, the Queen of Cups in for for the Aquarius who have nobody who the, for the Aquarius who were who was looking for this notification on their um on their phone, iPad, uh, computer, laptop, whatever. Those Aquarius, the Queen of Cups. So it's very fitting because the Queen of Cups, her cup is closed. You know, um, the queens are the doers of the tarot, but right now what you're doing is actively pursuing your own emotional death and stability because the emotion, the queen of cups is trying to practice emotional stability. So maybe there was something in the past, the recent past that destabilized you. It put you in a place of being frazzled, um, questioning yourself, questioning your intuition, not knowing maybe the seven of swords type of energy. You dealt with that from the past. And now you're at the queen of swords where you're dealing with nothing and nobody because you're trying to figure out you, your emotions. Also, you figure out that you have something to offer the world. Maybe you're going to just delve more into spirituality, yourself, um, your creative endeavors. Um, you have a, a really vast personality. It's, you're like an onion. You have layers and you're really thinking about how you can uh, contribute, be, be a value to something else other than a love relationship. Um, with the queen of swords here, um, excuse me, with the queen of cups here. So some of you could be the queen of swords. You cut this shit off. Okay. So let's clarify the seven of swords in the past. What's the seven of swords in the past from my Aquarius dealing with someone who they have a significant history with page of swords, nothing but swords coming out. So with all these swords here, definitely somebody had you up in your head. There was a lot of um, miscommunication. There's a lot of argument. So it looks like right now with the past, again, we, we got spying with the seven of swords and now we have the actual spy coming up, the page of swords. This could be you Aquarius it, and it could be just getting a tarot card reading or looking at a tarot card reading about the past person. I mean, it could be innocent, you know, altogether. It's not as if you, you're spying so that you can then, you know, you have some sinister plan could be with the seven of swords. Um, but I hope that it's not you, Aquarius. Um, and I know that's not the people here on my uh, channel. But anyhow, there is an energy of uh, gaining or garnering um, information, like trying to figure out. And this also could be you trying to learn and figure out why you would even tolerate 
um, this type of energy, the seven of swords type of energy for so long? Why would you even, um, why would you even give it attention? You, you could be learning about yourself, learning about uh, your mental capacity or maybe another person's mental capacity. You're really trying to figure out what they meant when they said, when they did. Um, you're also trying to figure out um, maybe even your next move. A relationship from the past could be very mental. You know, there's you have to have that mental agility with this person because they're tricky. They're deceptive. So you know that they can say one thing and they don't mean another. They can say one thing and not follow up. So it's like you have to be on your P's and your Q's when you deal with this person because you never know how you, if you let them blindside you, they will. Therefore, you are keeping communication to a minimum. Again, you know, uh, it could be that you guys are not talking at all or it's very little uh, because the page of swords talks about reframing from communication because all it does is turn into petty arguments, okay? Uh, the page of swords also, it, it talks about um, maybe somebody needing to have emotional, excuse me, uh, mental maturity. Somebody always thinks it's a game, it's a test, it's a it's a fight, it's a duel, and you know, and it's 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 really not. You know, it's really trying to gain insight about why would you do that? Why would you say that? What are you doing? What do you mean? And somebody feels like it is just you know a game with the page of swords here. Um, and again, somebody could be spying on you or vice versa. All right, so let's see. Um, those of you dealing with someone new, the three of swords, they got to put somebody out of their energy or you have to put someone out of your energy. It's going to be heartbreaking and devastating to somebody here. But somebody is willing to, you know, break that heart to maintain a relationship. Someone is really willing to have divorce or separation or you're going through that or you have gone through that. I heard maybe even divorce counseling. Um, somebody is dealing with the miscommunication, you know, with the three of swords here. Um, somebody is meddling in the relationship where they're stirring up trouble. It could be some third party just trying to cause problems between you and your person so that maybe you'll leave or this person will get frustrated. Let's see. What is the three of swords for? Okay, there we go. Wow, nothing but swords, nine of swords. Okay, so there's also some money issues and money worry. And we talked about that uh, with the three of swords. You know, you go through a divorce, you have to separate assets and so forth and you have to figure out what this and, diff and different liabilities and what will we do with that and I owe you how much and you know all of that stuff um nine of swords somebody is really there's a third party stirring up trouble because they know it's the end with the nine of swords they know well they know it's the end of the relationship they know it's the you know um it's final here it's about to be final someone can't deal with the fact that it is over Okay, someone is suffering from the, the dark night of the soul. They're really having to sit with those emotions and those thoughts, and it's really attacking them. Somebody is having a sleepless and a restless night over the fact that somebody is gone for good. It is done. Somebody filed the paper. Somebody filed the court order. Someone is saying, okay, I'll risk it all to get away from, to be able to be free of. Uh, the nine of swords is somebody not able to cope with the fact that this has changed. It is over. This is the beginning of the end, or this is the end of the end. I don't know. Uh, with the nine of swords here, there is separation here. Somebody is separating themselves or they have separated themselves. Um, with, so if you're in this new relationship, just know that when you meet people, especially, you know, us over a, a certain age, 25 and older, 30 and older, nobody is really single. I don't care what you say. Nobody is really single. Everybody has that one person that's either pining over them, wanting them back. Um, you may not be paying them any attention or, uh, you know, they're, they're still hoping for a possibility, but nobody is really single. I am single because I am not attached to or committed to or in a monogamous, monogamous relationship with someone. But if I do find someone tomorrow, I can say to them, yes, I'm single. Um, but let's say two months down the road, you know, in our relationship, here comes Johnny, you know, popping back up. It's because no one is really, really, really single to the point where there is no one vying for them. No one, no, or very little people are, there could be, but there are very little people that are single to that capacity. Everybody has something, a past, and, and sometimes they have to sever ties with that past. Um, so Aquarius, you could be dealing with someone new. 
We have to kind of sever ties, give them that energy, that time, that space to do that. Because again, no one was completely single waiting for you Aquarius to come into their life and be the, you know, the end all be all to them. There was always someone else before you for most people, you know, um, and most people will sh rear their ugly head when they realize that somebody is moving on. They have someone else. So it would be like the example of you meet someone, you know, things are going good. They're two months in. Now the ex, his ex or her ex is texting, is calling, is trying to show up at their job, pop up at their home. It was only because they, they figured out you were in the picture now. So allow your person the time to sever that tie because it looks like they will. All right. The Queen of Cups, for those of of you who are like super single like you said you know what i'm shutting it down i'm not on any social media i'm not on any dating sites when i go outside i go outside for a reason and then i come back in this <laughs> this is somebody who's actively single like i am maintaining my singlehood because of you know whatever reason the the queen of cups is trying to get her emotional footing back you know she doesn't need to be destabilized by another relationship or putting herself out there, or opening herself, her emotions up to a relationship here. Um, the queen of cups here for those who are super single. Yeah. The two of swords, you don't see it, but maybe somebody wants reconciliation with you more swords, nothing but swords, 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 except for the people who are super single queen of cups. Um, there's somebody totally in their head about you Aquarius from those of you who are still, pining over the past or still wanting the past back for those of you who are in new energy and those of you who are just not even dealing two of swords comes out i mean we're gonna have the whole sword family here um so you don't know if you it's just right now for though the super single aquarius is best for you to not make a decision about reconciliation or going back to so you haven't made the decision the decision is to not make the decision It's to focus on you with the queen of cups. You're not seeing, or you're not trying to see, you have buried your head in the proverbial sand of like, I just don't have time for it. I don't want to make time for it. And it is emotions. It is relationship. It is romantic relationship with a person. I don't want to deal is what some of you are saying is what, is what I'm kind of hearing. Um, some of you understood that, you know, in some recent relationship or situationship or whatever it was, it was a power struggle. You know, um, you guys couldn't negotiate. There was no cooperation. Somebody was not following along with, and then someone wasn't following along with you, Aquarius. So it was like a tug of war. Therefore, they, they were, there is separation. There is breakup. There is a breakdown and a close connection. But keep in mind that you, okay. Oh, with all these swords on the table, when you have the two of swords and you have this many swords cards, it says that be cautious of cutting off loved ones. Now, loved ones can be, of course, family members, friends, and then romantic partners. And there was a struggle here because you guys just couldn't work well together. There was no cooperation, no negotiation. There was not... Because both of you didn't sit down at the table and say, well, what are you offering? I mean, we're, what we are doing now in the world is looking at love relationships through the lens of fairy tales and rose colored glasses and sunshine and, you know, lollipops and gumdrops. When we really need to start looking at it as we would look at it as um, buying a home. It's a business contract. We want to know what we're getting in terms of um, the home. Or am I paying closing costs? You know, blah, 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 whatever, you know. Um, in, in terms of if we were getting a job, we would say, okay, well, um, yes, I can take the, the position, but uh, are you offering uh, health benefits or will you pay for that? You know, you, you go to the table with an active negotiation in everything else and in anything else in the world. But when it comes to love, we lose our shit. It's just like, we're just like, uh, is this supposed to work? No, it's not just supposed to work. Um, you need to come to the table with compromise, with negotiation. Okay. 
So you're a playboy and you're still out here, but you say you like me. So what does that mean for me? What if, if I decide to cooperate with what you got going on, what do I get out of this? And if we came to the table in love relationships or more of those types of conversations, less heartbreak and heartache and I need a tarot card reading and karmic situation, blah, 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 would, would stop happening. But we're going into it with fairy tale type of ideals about dealing with another human being. You don't control human beings, you know? So it's just like, we have to sit down and say, well, they don't want to get married, but they said they want me in their life for a very long time. Okay. Let's talk about this. What does this mean? It doesn't mean you have to agree to it, but at least you're going to walk away from the negotiation table, knowing where you stood, what they were offering and uh, you go, you would go to the table where you're non-negotiables, especially you guys over 30 years old, you men and women, this fairy tale stuff, we've got, we've got to come out of it. You've got to make a deal. You've got to cut a deal. Okay. Because nobody is getting exactly what they want. And when you do, and when you do see it happen, it is one in a million. It is not, it is like winning the lottery. How many people win the lottery? Do you even know someone who's won the lottery? There you are. So go into relationships with knowing what your non-negotiables are, what you will tolerate, what you won't put, put yours out there let them put theirs out there. And then you try to figure out if this works for you, if it doesn't walk away, but at least you'll walk away knowing. Yeah. Uh, wow. So we have counterparts, the King of Cups. There's still a lot of love here between you and somebody else. It's just too, it's too, oh man, the camera died. Hang on guys. I got so far into it, I didn't realize the camera died. I think, um, this is going to be the end, but anyhow, just hang in there. Let's see if we can just quickly do what we need to do and get back in the, where you can see the cards. All right, and we're back on. Build it while we fly, right? So there we are. Any, anyhow, <clears throat> we have the King of Cups and we have the Queen of Cups. It's funny that it, it rests between the negotiation card. Y'all are just going to have to figure this out. Like, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of love here. You both love each other, like each other. Um... Let's see. Let's leave. Let's leave us. Let's leave you guys with uh, the angel and ants and ant, the angels and ancestors uh, oracle. Angels and ancestor oracle card for Aquarius. All right. Spring. So you get the springtime coming up. See your seeds. Yeah. Okay. So we get the springtime coming up. See your seeds grow. Very nice. And this one wanted to come out medicine mother. Okay. Honor your inner knowing. Some of you know that this person wants you back. You know that this is your person. It's just, y'all just can't deal. You can't make a deal. You're going to, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Get a personal reading if you feel like you need to. Let's see what spring is about. I want to read this. I haven't uh, figured out what spring is about. Okay. All right, and um, let's see, spring. All right, it's an exciting time for you, okay? Um, the animals are coming out of hibernation. So it's like maybe both of you guys, especially if you're dealing with somebody from the past, they were deceptive in nature. Um, you guys took a break, and now you're going to come out of hibernation. Um Something is fertile. It's on fertile ground. It says that because in Celtic animal medicine, the, the hair 
the rabbit brings intuition and rebirth. We talked about intuition with the queen of cups, um, intuition and rebirth. And then we also have the medicine uh, mother here with an inner knowing. And then this card is talking about spring. It talks about intuition. So it's like, maybe, you know, around the springtime, this person is going to come back or you guys are going to be together. Or it's going to be a reconciliation. Um, it says that you're ready for all of these ideas to come in. There's an abundance of opportunity here. There could be financial growth here also. Um, there's just gonna, it's just going to be major expansion for you, okay? Um, if And this did arrive in the future position. So if it ar arrives in the future position, um, it also can indicate that the coming spring will usher in important energies with regards to your question or your intentions. So around the springtime, do expect something to change. Uh, we you do know that something is going to definitely um, shift for you here in your, uh, okay. And I'm going to read uh, Medicine Woman, right? Uh, medicine Mother, uh, Medicine Woman. Take action. Do what you know you need to do. Maybe you need to just figure you out right now. A super singer, sing, super single Aquarius. You need to figure you out. Um, maybe even go ask your mother. Mother knows best. Um, you've gone through some ups and downs and maybe even loss. Okay. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes. It looks like you're going to get a second try at something and do know that you're supported. Okay. Um, but they want you to take the next step forward. Um, there's an old pattern that you're going to do away with and release, which is good. Um, you already know the answers, especially with the queen of cups coming out. You already know the answers. You already know what's happening, but action is required. And your angels uh, and your guides are, are bringing you to a place of courage to move forward and just take just one step. Okay. Something's going to be presented to you. That's what I have for you, Aquarius. I hope that it resonates for you. If it did, let me know how it resonates down in the comment section for you. If you're waiting for the springtime, put some flowers down there. I feel like the spring is going to be good for the Aquarius collective who are doing the work. So go ahead, put your flowers down there. Your your uh, rabbits, your hair. Okay, we got the rabbit here. Good luck, fertility. Around the springtime, something is really going to blossom here. So we're going to put some flowers, some rabbits down there. We're going to put some trees. We're going to put everything down there. In the, in the springtime, things are, are beautiful, okay? You're going to come out of hibernation, especially for those who are the queen of cups, who are super single. Something is going to happen. Something is going to manifest. It's going to be a very fruitful and um, fertile time for you, okay? Because of the seeds that you have already planted, okay? So you're going to see your seeds grow. Very nice. Aquarius, get your own personal reading at the website level, okay? Um, the link is below. You can also learn tarot classes with me. The link will be below. You could purchase something from my Amazon wish list. Uh, the, the season for giving is here. Thank you. Um, and if you feel like you want to talk to me, guess what? You can now find me on keen.com. Uh, that's K-E-E-N.com. The link will be below. You could talk to me for 10 minutes for $1.99. Yep. Me, 10 minutes, chat with me for $1.99. Follow the link. And if you're having trouble with that link, please send me an email. The email address is in the description box and we'll get you squared away, okay? Do keep in mind that I do a live show every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night. Tuesday and Thursday, I am live 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Sunday, I'm live 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do the collective reading, and then you guys can ask questions, okay? So thank you. Many blessings to you. Take care.